Welcome to Edupedia World Grade 10 Computer Science Video Lecture Series. I am Rebecca Vendibona and from this episode we are going to learn about Numbering Systems Conversion. If you could remember in the previous episode we basically talked about the binary number system and the decimal number system. In the binary system there were two digits and in the decimal number system there were ten digits. The number of digits available in any number system is known as the base or we can say radix. So the base or radix of binary system is 2 and similarly the base or radix of decimal number system is 10 as it contains 10 digits from 0 to 9. Now apart from those two there are other two numbering systems. For the octal number system the base is 8 and for the hexadecimal numbering system the base is 16. So why there are varying bases? The answer lies in what happens when we count up to the maximum number that the numbering system allows. For example in base 10 we can count from 0 to 9 that is 10 digits. Now this table summarizes the base of each of the number system and the symbols each of the number system can use. For the binary number system it can use only 0 and 1. The octal number system it can use numbers between 0 to 7 and for the decimal number system it can use numbers between 0 to 9 and for the hexadecimal there is a little bit difference. It uses both numbers as well as characters from 0 to 9 as well as A to F. Actually A to F represent the numbers 10 to 15. We'll talk about this matter later and move into our first conversion activity binary to decimal. In here we are given a binary number. Remember when you write a number in any number system you should mention the base of the number system except decimal number system. For example in here for this binary number it has mentioned the base 2 in subscript font. Ok, now the first step is you have to create this kind of a table structure. In the first row starting from the right side you have to write 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3 and so on. As this is a base 2 number here we are going to represent 2 to the power of n. n equals 0 to the positional length of the given number. In the second row of the table we are showing the value of the first row. 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4 and so on. And in the third row we are showing the given number 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. In the fourth row it is the multiplication of the second row and the third row. For example 1 multiplied by 1 is 1, 2 multiplied by 1 is 2, 4 multiplied by 0 is 0, 8 multiplied by 1 is 8, 16 multiplied by 0 is 0, 32 multiplied by 1 is 32. And now what we have to do is sum each terms of product until all bits have been used. So 32 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1 equals 43. So in this binary number we are representing the decimal number 43. Let's try to do another conversion. Here we are given the binary number 1001. Let's try to obtain the decimal number of this. First, 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Now this is the binary number 1001. In multiplication row 1 multiplied by 1 is 1, 2 multiplied by 0 is 0, 4 multiplied by 0 is 0 and 8 multiplied by 1 is 8. If we sum up the 8 and 1 we will get the number 9. So here we have represent the decimal number of 9. Here is another conversion on binary to decimal but this time we have a binary fraction number. You can see there is a small dot in the binary number. We call that dot the radix point. 
left side from the radix point represent the integer part and the right side from the radix point represent the fractional part. Integer part is same as previous but for the fractional part we have to do something like this. In the first row of the table for the fractional part starting from the leftmost position 2 minus 1, 2 minus 2 and so on. So in here it represent 2 to the power of minus n. So remember for the fractional part it represent 2 to the power of minus n. For the integer part it represent 2 to the power of n. Now in the second row it shows the value of the first row. 2 to the power of minus 1 is 0 0.5. 2 to the power of minus 2 is 0 0.25. 2 to the power of minus 3 is 0 0.125. Now in the third row it shows the fractional part of the binary number 101. In the fourth row it shows the multiplication of the second row and the third row. 0 0.5 multiplied by 1 is 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 multiplied by 0 is 0 and 0 0.125 multiplied by 1 is 0 0.125. Now here we have to sum up the fractional part. So the answer is 6 to 5. So as a whole, the whole number is 27.625 in decimal numbering format. Now in here I want to mention few things about the radix point because it is a general term that applies to all of the numbering systems. In the base 10 notation, that means in the decimal numbering systems, the radix point is more commonly called as the decimal point and in the binary numbering systems, which means in the base 2 notation, it is called as the binary point. Now consider that we want to find the binary equivalent of the decimal number 75. How can it be done? The method is to go on dividing the number by the base or radix as long as it will be possible. So here the base is 2, so we are going to divide the number 75 by 2 as long as it is possible. When each time we are dividing the number, we have to keep the reminder and write this reminder in reverse order will give us the equivalent binary number. Now consider this example in here, we are going to divide 75 by the radix 2. The quotient is 37 and the reminder is 1. And again divide this 37 by 2 where the new quotient will be 18 and the new reminder will be 1. And when dividing the 18 by 2 the new quotient is 9 and the reminder is 0. When dividing the 9 by 2 the quotient will be 4 and the reminder is 1. When dividing 4 by 2 the quotient will be 2 and the reminder is 0. When dividing the 2 by 2 the quotient will be 1 and the reminder is 0. Now if we write the reminders in reverse order, we will get a number like 1001011. This is the binary representation of the decimal number 75. Here is another exercise. We have to obtain the binary representation of the decimal number 36. 36 divided by 2, the quotient is 18 and the reminder is 0. 18 divided by 2, the quotient is 9 and the reminder is 0. Dividing the 9 by 2, the quotient is 4 and the reminder is 1. Divide the 4 by 2, reminder is 0, quotient is 2. Divide 2 by 2, reminder is 0 and the quotient is 1. So if we write these reminders in a reverse order, you will obtain a number like this. 1 zero zero one zero zero and the base is two so this is the binary representation of the decimal number 36 the process we showed in the previous slide was to finding the binary equivalent of any positive decimal integer notice the term integer integer means a whole number no fractional parts the method described to convert decimal number to equivalent binary is valid for only integers. The steps to convert a fractional decimal number to its equivalent binary is like this. It is a totally different process. Suppose we want to convert the decimal number 0 0.75 to its equivalent binary form. The method is go on multiplying the number with the base and take the integer out. 
then multiply the fractional part again by its base and follow the procedure for 4 to 5 places if it does not reduce to 0. Let's go step by step. The first step, multiply the initial value by the base. 0.75 multiplied by 2. It is equal to 1.50. Now keep in mind the integer part, 1. Now take the fractional part, 0.50. Multiply it by 2. It is equal to 1.0. Now the fractional part is 0. Therefore we can stop in here. Now the integer part is 1. Now taking the integer part of both of those two results, we will get the final value 0.11. So this is the binary representation of the fractional number 0.75. In the previous slide we had only a fractional part. But this time we have a real number. A number which have both the integer part and the fractional part. Now how to convert 24.35 into a binary equivalent number? It is like this. Find the equivalent binary values of the integer part and the fractional part separately. Then write the value side by side in order to get the equivalent binary value. We first try to get the binary equivalent of the integer value 24. 24 divided by 2, the quotient is 12 and the remainder is 0. 12 divided by 2, quotient is 6 and the remainder is 0. 6 divided by 2, quotient is 3 and the remainder is 0. 3 divided by 2, the remainder is 1 and the quotient is 1. So 24 can be represented as 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Now this is the radix point or else we can say the binary point. Now let's go for the fractional part. The initial fractional value is 0 0.35. It is multiplied by 2. The answer is 0 0.70. The integer part is 0. And when we take the fractional part of that, 0 0.70, it is multiplied by 2. The value is 1.40, the integer part is 1 and then we take the fractional part of that 0 0.40, it is multiplied by 2, the answer is 0 0.80, the integer part is 0 and then we take the fractional part of that 0 0.80, it is multiplied by 2, the answer is 1.60. The integer part is 1. Now this looks like the fractional part is not go for the 0. Therefore 4 places is just enough. So we can write down this integer part. 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is how we can represent the fractional part of the decimal value 0 0.35. So now the final result is. 11000 the binary point 0101 so this represents the decimal value 24.35 here is another example 27.27 first take the integer part 27 divided by 2 quotient is 13 and the remainder is 1 13 divided by 2 quotient is 6 and the remainder is 1 6 divided by 2, quotient is 3 and the remainder is 0. 3 divided by 2, the quotient is 1 and the remainder is 1. Now let's write this in the reverse order. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is the binary representation of the integer value 27. Now let's go for the fractional part. The initial fractional value is 0 0.27. It is multiplied by 2, it is equal to 0 0.54, the integer part is 0, now take the fractional part, 0 0.54, it is multiplied by 2, the answer is 1.08, integer part is 1. Now let's take the fractional part. 0 0.08 it is multiplied by 2 the answer is 0 0.16 the integer part is 0 
now take the fractional part of this 0 0.16 multiplied by 2 the answer is 0 0.32 the integer part is 0 now if we write down this integer part in here with the binary point 0 1 0 0 so this is the representation of the fractional part 0 0.27 actually these two zeros doesn't need for this answer because it doesn't represent any significant value if you can remember this position represent 2 to the power of minus 1 this position represent 2 to the power of minus 2 and so on therefore these two zeros doesn't have any value so the final output is 11011 binary point 01 this is the binary equivalent of the decimal value 27.27 and with that we are going to wind up this session and continue with the next episode to discuss about the octal numbering system and the hexadecimal numbering system basically in this episode we discuss about the binary numbering system and the decimal numbering system and i hope you got the understanding how to perform the conversions between the binary numbering system and the decimal numbering system especially on the fractional parts so see you from the next episode thank you for watching and stay tuned on with edipedia world